it's officially time for you to go out and fly your drone. And you're probably wondering, if we're going to fly our drone, then why am I inside sitting at my desk? Because if you just take your drone outside and you arm it and you raise the throttle, if you have done anything wrong in the previous steps, it can flip out. So it's a good idea that the very first time you fly your drone after building it, or anytime you change your props, or anytime you change a motor, although hopefully you're not changing motors too often, anytime you change anything that could have caused one of those things to go wrong, that causes it to freak out, that we do a specific procedure to safely make sure that everything is working okay before we go ahead and fly. Now, I wanna warn you that doing this inside, like I'm doing, is a terrible idea. There are videos all over the internet of people trying to do a test like this in their house and the quadcopter goes into the ceiling and makes a hole in the ceiling or into the television and breaks the television screen. I am doing this because I have already test flown this and I know that it's not gonna freak out and it's really cold outside and I don't wanna go stand outside in the cold while I talk to you. So I'm gonna do it indoors. You should not do it indoors. You should do it outdoors somewhere safe where if the quadcopter freaks out and flies off in a random direction, nobody will get hurt. So I'm gonna go take this. I'm gonna, uh, I got my, everything is all set up. Props are on. Uh, battery is secured as I described, like the strap is holding the cable. Everything is ready to go. I'm gonna need my controller. I don't need my goggles for this step. And then I'm gonna go set the quadcopter down some distance away from myself. So if it freaks out, it doesn't hit me. And I'll show you the next step. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our controller and we're going to lower the throttle all the way down. That is going to let us arm the quadcopter. Then I'm going to flip the arm switch and the quadcopter will arm. And then I'm gonna disarm. That's step one, does it arm? If it doesn't arm, something has gone wrong, we need to troubleshoot. Great, it armed. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna arm, and then I am going to very slowly deflect the roll stick to the left until the quadcopter just tilts to the left. And then return the stick to center. Then, very slowly, I'm gonna deflect the stick to the right. I'm just gonna slowly deflect it a little bit more and a little bit more until the quadcopter just tilts to the right. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna do the same thing front and back. And finally, I'm gonna do it with the yaw stick. And the quadcopter may not like to do this on the carpet because it can't really slide, but we're gonna see if it does it. See, it starts hopping a little. Just recenter the stick and most importantly, at no point during this process should you raise the throttle at all. Now, everything you saw there is exactly what we would expect. When the quadcopter just tilted in the commanded direction, it didn't freak out, it didn't flip over, it didn't start fly to the moon, nothing went wrong. If your quadcopter doesn't do that, if it does weird stuff, something's wrong. And if you had raised the throttle, it might freak out much worse. We should try to figure out what's going on and what's wrong. But hopefully your quadcopter did exactly what my quadcopter did. The next thing to do is we're gonna hover it. And again, don't hover your quadcopter in your living room, especially if you're a new pilot, but don't do it. But what we're gonna do outside in a safe location is we are gonna arm, and then we're going to slowly raise the throttle until the quadcopter just lifts off. And then once it lifts off and gets maybe about a foot off the ground and is hovering, we're gonna set it back down again, lower the throttle and disarm. Don't try to hover it line of sight unless you already know how to fly line of sight. Don't, in fact, don't push this stick at all. Just lift straight up till the quadcopter is about a foot off the ground and then if it starts drifting, you should be doing this in a place where there's enough room that if it starts to drift a little bit, it doesn't matter. 
Because the minute, if you don't have experience flying a drone like this, and especially not flying line of sight, the minute you start trying to correct things by, oh, it's drifting, I need to put some stick input in, it's just going to flip out and crash uh, almost immediately. I just, I've seen this happen so many times. Um, so we're going to just lift off, let it hover, let it drift. And then once it safely hovers, we're going to set it back down and disarm. And now we are ready to fly the drone. Yay! Next, we're going to take the quadcopter outside somewhere where it's safe to fly, where we have lots of room uh, to crash. And if anything goes wrong, we have lots of safe places to disarm and dump it in the, in the grass somewhere nice and soft. We're not going to take off and fly over a lake the very first time we're out. We're not going to fly into an asphalt concrete building or around people. We're going to do it somewhere safe. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and arm, and then I am going to uh, take off and start flying slowly forward. And I'm just going to take a look at my video link quality, okay? With the DJI system, I'm going to look at my megabits per second. Same with walk snail. I should be seeing 60 megabits per second with DJI or 50 megabits per second. DJI, it's going to depend on what your channel width is set to, your, your bandwidth. You may see only 25 megabits per second, um, but you're going to want to see the maximum bit rate that is correct for whatever bandwidth you're set to. Um, if you see like an unexpectedly low number, if the video is glitchy, we're going to set it down and we're going to troubleshoot that. Okay. We don't want to just take off and start flying like a madman and then have the video be bad or something be wrong and then uh, crash and not be able to recover. Uh, as far as your link quality, that's your control link. Um, we're going to look in, uh, in my screen, it's in the upper left corner of the screen, and we're going to look at the LQ. And you see my LQ reads 7 colon 100. It's that second number, the 100, that you want to watch. That number tells you your link quality, and when that number is 100, everything is perfect. The threshold you want to look for is if that number, hang on, let me turn my, I'm going to turn my output power down slightly. I don't want to accidentally disarm, but hold on. I can turn my Express LRS output power down and I can demonstrate for you. Okay, there we go. Express LRS is only at 10 milliwatts now. And we should be able to get my LQ to drop a little bit so you can see it. If I like go behind here, maybe. Yeah, LQ is dropping. And you see it said RSNR low. Don't worry about that too much, but you see my LQ dropped. I think it got down maybe into the 80s. When you see your LQ at, let's say, 80 or below, that is a sign that you're at risk of fail-safing. The quadcopter will continue to fly with the LQ down in the 40s, but it'll be super stuttery and hard to control. LQ of about 80 is roughly where you want to say, hey, something's wrong, I need to turn around and come back, or I need to climb out. And then the other question people ask when they're getting started is, as far as my battery voltage goes, when should I land? And the answer, if you look in the lower left, you can see my average cell voltage. It's about 3.8 volts right now. With a lithium polymer battery, we can fly down to about 3.4, 3.5 volts. Uh, the absolute minimum is 3.0 volts. But if we get all the way, that's just like if you don't want to run your car all the way out of gas. You want to get to a gas station with some gas still in the tank. Uh, if we go below 3.0 volts, we'll literally damage the battery. The other thing you should keep in mind is that as you're flying, the harder you work the battery, the lower the voltage will be. So right now we're at 3.7, 3.8, but if I go full throttle, it'll immediately sag down to like, it got as low as 3.2. And that's okay, as long as we stay above 3.0, because as soon as we get off the throttle, it'll go back up again, okay? So if you're flying like this, just smoothly flying, and you see 3.5, 3.4 volts, you should really already be landing at 3.4 volts because it's going gonna, it's gonna to drop out quick. If you have a long way to go to get back home, you're going to be in trouble. Um, but right now I'm flying at around 3.7 volts and I'm good. Even if I start like punching the throttle a little and flying a little more aggressively, you see we're sting. Oh, hello. Okay, still in the air. That was fun. Even if I start flying a little more aggressively, I, I still am staying well above 3.5, 3.4. There's a little sag. That's called voltage sag. Okay, but I'm still good. Little sag right there, low battery warning when I hit the throttle, but it bounces right back up again, see? I can still push it. Full throttle got way down there. 
I'm still good. I'm still good. Low battery, still good. See, it's bouncing back up again. I'm still good at 3.5, 3.4, but it's bouncing back up again. I'm getting to the end. I'm almost to the end. 3.6. 3.4, but it bounced back up to 3.6. I'm still good. I can keep playing. I'm getting close to the end though. See right there. Oh, it took a minute to recover there as I was dropping out of the trees there. I maybe want to slow down a little and not quite go so hard or at least go hard, but do it close to home so that when I need to land, I can land. Still pretty good here, 3.5. We were having a good time. 3.5, low voltage, low voltage. So now we're kind of, okay. Now it's time to slow down. So you see it was just staying under 3.5 there and giving me the warning. Now at this point, I could just bring it home and put a new battery on. If I wanted to keep flying slowly and smoothly, I could get another minute or two out of, out of it, right? But if I start flying hard again, it's gonna immediately start giving me trouble and uh, could potentially drop out of the sky somewhere where I don't want to drop out of the sky. Ah, whew. Now you're probably wondering, where do I go from here? You've built a drone, you've hopefully flown a drone. I'm gonna suggest two places you can go from here. The first is, do you want to learn to fly your drone? Like in a methodical, uh, in, in, intentional way instead of just like do your best and hope you make progress and maybe you do and maybe you don't. I've got a how to fly series. I'm going to put a playlist on screen and you can go start learning how to fly. Uh, the other thing I'm going to suggest is if you want to learn more about Edge TX, the software that's running on this controller, uh, maybe it's a little early for you to dive into that deep hole of knowledge, but if you do, I've got a whole playlist teaching you more about this controller. And if you just can't get enough, I'll put that playlist on screen as well. I'll see you there.